Hi, this is Presh Tallwalker. Can you place the numbers 1 through 9 in the following 3x3 three three grid so that each row, column, and diagonal adds up to the same number? This is a condition for the 3x3 three three magic square. I want you to find all possible arrangements and I want you to prove there are no other ways to do it. Can you figure it out? Give this puzzle a try, and when you're ready, keep watching the video for the solution. Alright, there are eight different possibilities for the 3x3 three three magic square. You'll notice some patterns. Every single square has the number 5 in the center. The corners of each square are made up of the even numbers 2, 4, 6, and 8. The edges are made up of the odd numbers 1, 3, 7, and 9. In fact, every single one of these eight patterns is really a rotation and a reflection of a single pattern. So what do I mean by that? So let's focus on the magic square in the upper left. I'm going to create a copy of it, and now let's imagine reflecting the numbers through the middle. So this will transpose the first and third columns. This brings another magic square, which was the second square in our list. Let's make a copy of this second square. I'm going to rotate 180 degrees. And now I'm going to bring the numbers right side up. This was the third magic square in our list. Let's make a copy of the first square again. Now I'm going to do a reflection across the diagonal. So this will bring all, exchange all the numbers that are across the diagonal with each other. This is another magic square that was in our list. And you could continue. You would actually find that all of these magic squares can be obtained by rotations and reflections, or combinations of rotations and reflections of the first pattern. So they all actually can be obtained from each other. As a technical note, these are actually correspond to the symmetries of a square, or the dihedral group of order 8. So we're going to prove these are the only ways you can have a 3x3 magic square. And we're going to do that in several steps. So first, we're going to say, we don't actually know a magic square exists, but we're going to come up with some conditions that if a square exists, certain things have to be true. So one thing is that every single row, column, and diagonal is going to need to sum to 15. So why is that? Let's take a look at summing up the first row. We don't know what it is, but we'll say the sum has to be some constant m. The second row has to have exactly the same sum because in a magic row, every single row has the same sum. The third row also has to have the same sum. So now let's add up these three rows. We have m three times, which brings us to 3m. But there is another way that we could sum up the three rows. We know that the three rows contain the numbers 1 through 9 used exactly once. So we know that all of the nine rows, all of the nine elements, have to be the sum of the numbers 1 through 9. So we have the sum of the numbers of 1 through 9 equal to 3m, which means 45 equals 3m, and so m equals 15. So if a magic square exists, it needs to have a magic sum of 15. I did this proof using the three rows, you could similarly do that proof using the three columns. Now step two, we know that these three numbers are going to need to add up to 15. So now we can try and compute the different ways we can get to a sum of 15 from three distinct numbers. Let's say we have one as our first number, and then we want to add two. In order to get to 15, we would need to add 12. But that's clearly a problem because our numbers only go up to 9. So we cannot have 12, and therefore we can't have 1 and 2. At most, we could have 1 being paired with 9, which means the middle number would have to be 5. If we paired 1 with 8, then the middle number would be 6. So we can go through these possibilities and figure out there are only 8 distinct ways that we can get these numbers 
to add up to 15. I'm going to put those sums to the side, but this is the crucial step in the proof. We're actually going to be able to deduce a lot from it. For example, this will be able to tell us the center square has to be 5. The center square is involved in the middle row sum, it's involved in the middle column sum, and it's also involved in the sum of each of the two diagonals. So the center square is involved in four different sums of numbers. So what possibly could the center square be? If we look at our sums, only the number five is involved in four different combinations. All of the other ones are involved in either two or three of the combinations. So that means the center square would have to be five. Continuing the reason, we, reasoning, we can find the corners have to be even numbers. A corner would be involved in one of the row sums, one of the column sums, and also one of the diagonal sums. So each corner is involved in exactly three of the sums, and this corresponds to the numbers two, the numbers four, 4, the number 6, and the number 8. So we know the corners would have to be 2, 4, 6, and 8. And finally, every edge is involved in a row sum and a column sum. So it's involved in exactly two distinct sums. If we look at our list of sums that get up to 15, this would be the numbers 1, 3, 7, and 9. So let's put all this knowledge to use. We know that the number five has to be in the center. We can put the number one right above it. We can put it to the left of the five. We can put it below the five and we can put it to the right of five. Opposite the one, we would have to have nine in order to get to 15. Now in the perpendicular row or a column, we can put the number three in two different spots. If you focus on the square in the upper left, we can put the 3 to the left of the 1, or we could put it to the right of the 1. We could put, if you look at the lower left square, we could put the 3 above the 1, or we could put it below the 1. So in each one of these possibilities, we can put 3 in two different spots that are perpendicular to wherever the row or the column that the 1 is. And now we're going to have to fill in the 9s and the 7s from the 1s and the 3s that we put in because 7 has to be opposite 3 and 9 has to be opposite 1. So these are a total of 8 different possibilities to put the odd numbers on the edges. And in fact, that's the only way that we can arrange this. The odd numbers were involved in exactly two sums, so that means the remaining sums are the even numbers and they're forced by the arrangements we've already made. So these are the eight different magic squares. They actually do work. These all add up to 15 in each row, column, and diagonal. And so we've proven that eight of them exist, and by the conditions we set up, these are the only squares that could be a three by three magic square. As we've shown earlier, these are all unique up to rotations and reflections. So the three by three magic square is really cool. It's only one pattern and the rest of the patterns are related by being reflections and rotations of the square. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. I make videos on math and game theory. You can catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions, which you can follow on Facebook, Google Plus, and Patreon. You can catch me on social media at Presh Talwalker. And if you like this video, please check out my books. There are links in the video description.